Okay, thank you for the inter, uh, introduction. Uh, I will talk about OpenAPI development with Python. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Takuro Wada, and uh, I'm a software engineer in Kabuku Inc. Uh, Kabuku Inc. is a Japanese startup which providing uh, manufacturing service uh, which connects uh, the people who want to create something and the factory who can make it. <clears throat> and I was a speaker of your person 2016 and the uh, PyCon JP 2015. And uh, I'm also a member of Suaga Kojin uh, Technical Committee, uh, Python and TypeScript. And those are my pointers in internet, so uh, please follow it. And uh, this is uh, today's agenda. And first, uh, I will talk about uh, what is Open API. So, uh, introduction of Open API and basics. And second, I will talk about Open API tools. So, introduction uh, some uh, useful tools uh, to increase your productivity. And the final part of this presentation, I will talk about the actual case study of uh, my company uh, using Open API and Python. Okay. Uh, so first, what is Open API? So who knows about Open API? And who are using it for your project? Okay, thank you. So uh, Open API is a literary uh, API description language which is focusing on creating, evolving, and promoting vendor neutral description format. So uh, what can I, uh, what can do with Open API? So it's simple. Uh, you can write your API spec with uh, Open API. So that's simple. For more detail, uh, Open API is supporting uh, two uh, type of format, YAML and JSON, and it's based on JSON schema. Uh, JSON schema is vocabulary to annotate and validate JSON. <coughs> so it's, uh, it makes use of uh, JSON scheme function. And Open API is originally known as Swagger. So uh, Swagger is renamed to uh, Open API in, in 2016. So uh, in this session, I will uh, use uh, the word Swagger uh, often, uh, but do not confuse it. Uh, it's the almost the same meaning of Open API. And uh, yeah. So how to use Open API? So Open API is uh, API spec itself, so you can use it as uh, API document. And uh, Open API core tools uh, can generate good looking document, uh, which uh, means uh, it generates HTML, CSS, and JavaScript automatically. So uh, once you write your API spec and generate the document, uh, you can share it with your team, uh, front end, uh, back end, or developers or non developers. Or if your uh, service has public API, uh, you can generate the document uh, for any developers all over the world. Okay, so uh, another way to use Open API is as uh, API tools. I mean, uh, mainly uh, code generator. So, uh, for example, uh, if you write API spec, uh, you can generate uh, source codes for uh, uh, validating request data from clients in server side, or uh, generates codes for uh, API calling part in clients. Okay, so uh, there are several versions uh, of Open API. And uh, as I said, uh, Open API is originally known as Swagger, and it's renamed Open API in 2016. So uh, version 1.2 and version 2.0 uh, was released in, uh, was re in uh, 2014. So it's uh, known as uh, Swagger. And the uh, new major version, uh, next new major, major version 3.0 will be released in uh, July 2017. So this month, uh, maybe next week, will, it will be released. So I think it's so hot technology. Yeah. And there are some competitors of, of NPI. So uh, those kind of language is called uh, categorized as a uh, RESTful API DL description language. And one, uh, one is uh, RAMU, a uh, RESTful API modeling language. Uh, it's a uh, YAML-based uh, language. And uh, another one is API Blueprint. It's Markdown-based. 
uh, by the way, uh, the developer of API Brain is uh, Apiary, uh, which is acquired Oracle uh, in the beginning of this year. And uh, there are many more tools uh, in Open API than those tools. So uh, if you are starting to uh, learning uh, these kind of tools, I recommend, I recommend you to uh, start from Open API. And uh, I investigate uh, Google Trends of these three. Uh, Open API, uh, also known as Swagger, is gathering more attention than others in the market. So uh, uh, it's hot technology again. <clears throat> so okay, next uh, Open API tools. I, I will introduction some Open API tools. So. Uh, there are two categories, uh, big categories, uh, Open API tools. Uh, one is uh, core tools. Uh, those tools are developed by Open API team, uh, Swagger team, so uh, kind of official tools. And the other is uh, community tools, uh, which, which are developed by community. Uh, I mean, uh, software developer all over the world. And uh, because uh, this is your Python, I will introduce Python tools in this session. Uh, but you can find uh, so many uh, language tools uh, of, of API. Okay, so start from core tools. Uh, I want to introduce three tools uh, in this session, uh, Swagger UI, uh, Swagger Editor, and Swagger Cogen. And uh, okay, so Swagger UI. Uh, Swagger UI is a tool uh, that show your API spec with uh, built full format. So once you write your API spec uh, with YAML or JSON and give it to uh, Swagger UI, uh, Swagger UI automatically render the document uh, as a HTML uh, and CSS and JavaScript. And the Swagger UI is uh, also providing feature that uh, call your API uh, directory from your browser page. So uh, you can use it as a test tool for your API. So uh, let's see the example. This is a right, oh, sorry. This is a right demo. And uh, this is showing the uh, Petto Store's uh, API spec. Uh, you can find some API definitions, and you can try it here. And send the uh, actual uh, API request to the server and see the results uh, in this page. OK, back to the presentation. OK, next. Uh, next is uh, Swagger Editor. Uh, Swagger Editor is a, a WYSIWYG spec editor in web browser. Uh, uh, this tool provides some good features uh, like syntax highlighting, on the compilation, uh, real-time spec validation. Uh, so uh, if, uh, once you write an uh, invariant document in the Swagger Editor, uh, Swagger Editor will notice you uh, you are writing in very thick uh, line number, blah, 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 uh, immediately. So it's very useful. And uh, uh, if you go to the URL, uh, you can see the live demo. Uh, you can try your uh, spec writing uh, at the site. OK, so uh, next, Swagger Code Gen. Uh, Swagger Code Gen uh, providing function to uh, generate uh, servers and clients uh, called from your API spec. So uh, once you write your API spec uh, with Open API and give it to Swagger Cogen, uh, you can generate uh, multiple, multiple kind of code, uh, including multiple language uh, like Java, TypeScript, Golan, uh, Python, and so many uh, other languages, Ruby or C++. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, some language are uh, provided uh, so servers code and clients code are, uh, can be generated uh, for some, some language. <coughs> it's very useful, it's powerful. Yes, next community tools. Uh, there are many Python tools for Open API. 
So uh, many tools are uh, introduced in the Swarga official website. So uh, if you go there, you can find many tools uh, registered. And uh, those tools are providing function as validator or call generator or spec parser and so on. And some tools are for the specific framework uh, like Flask or Pyramid uh, Bottle. And today, I want to introduce one of these tools. It's very good. Uh, the tool is uh, Variable Core. Uh, Variable Core is a Python library that adds client side and server side supports for Open API. And it supports uh, by, uh, Python 2 and Python 3 uh, and developed by Yelp. And uh, I, th uh, I think uh, it's good feature is that uh, it's not dedicated to any specific framework. So, uh, you can use it uh, in your own Python project today. And uh, it's very simple to use, uh, no complicated setting. And providing good features uh, like validation uh, and marshalling and ma uh, marshalling. And uh, uh, yeah, and custom forms for type conversion. Uh, I will mention uh, this function uh, next. So let's see the example. So in this session, I will use this scheme. Uh, the name is book, and the type is object, uh, which has property ID as integer, title as in string, uh, and author as string as well, and ID is required property. And to use probable core, uh, you need to uh, prepare. Uh, prepare. Mm. So first, uh, load YAML file with OpenAPI spec. And the verbal core is also supporting JSON, so you can use JSON spec as well. And uh, number two, uh, create a verbal core spec object uh, using from dict method. And number three, uh, retrieve a book definition uh, from uh, load spec. And final, finally, uh, you can call a validate scheme object to validate your uh, data. So in this code, uh, the target variable is, uh, will be validated. So uh, what will happen if the invalid data uh, is given? Let's see the example. So if, we, if required property ID is not defined in dict. So in this example, I give empty dict to the method, uh, but uh, ID is required, so it's invalid. Uh, this is the result. So uh, validation error exception is raised, and the message is ID is required property. That's correct. And another example, uh, if our property has uh, inverted type value, so uh, your book definition, uh, title uh, should be string, but uh, this dict uh, has a title uh, with integer one. So it's inverted. Then, uh, validation error is uh, also raised, uh, as well as uh, the last example. And the message is one is not type string. Okay, that's correct. It's very useful. And next, a masha. Uh, a masha means uh, convert a dict type object to a pipe. So, uh, you, uh, the pro uh, prepare procedure is the same as uh, validation. And uh, you will uh, use uh, a Marshall scheme object, object to uh, a Marshall. So let's see the example. I'm, I'm now giving uh, this dict uh, ID one, title Merchant of Venice, and author William Shakespeare. And this is a, a, a good result. So uh, Python model object is successfully created. Uh, book object, author William Shakespeare. Uh, ID one and the title Merchant of Venice. And uh, one of the good feature of uh, machining is uh, aut automatically uh, type conversion. So uh, I added a new property, uh, release date, uh, which has a uh, string type uh, with uh, format date, uh, date format. And let's see uh, another example. So uh, I added a uh, release date key and uh, with a value, uh, string value, uh, 2017 hyphen 07 hyphen 11. And uh, let's see the result. 
uh, this is a result. So the release date uh, is uh, converted automatically uh, to date time dot date object. Yeah, that's very useful and powerful. And uh, variable core has uh, default defined formats, uh, byte, uh, date, uh, double, date time, uh, float, uh, int32, or, and those definitions are, uh, you can find in uh, formatter.py of variable core. And you can also define your custom format by yourself. Uh, there is a document uh, uh, for the procedure, so if you're interested, uh, refer the URL. And the final part of uh, Marshall is, uh, ah, sorry, final part of Raval Core is uh, Marshall. So it's inverse procedure of uh, Marshall. So uh, convert Python model object to uh, dicts. So in this example, uh, I created a book object uh, which has ID 1. Uh, title Merchant of Venice, author William Shakespeare, and the release date is uh, date object uh, 2017, uh, 7-11. And uh, it, uh, this is a result. Uh, release date uh, is automatically converted to a uh, string uh, with date haunt. That's fantastic. And uh, there are many good features I do not mention today. So uh, you can refer the document or I've, I've created some example of Rabal core, so uh, you can go to see the example at the URL. Okay, so the final part of the presentation, uh, actual case study. So uh, project overview. Uh, well, we are providing system which name is Cub Connect, and uh, Cub Connect is manufacturing cloud platform which connect people who want to make something and the factory who can make it and the selection process uh, is done by AI, trained uh, with deep learning. And this is a system architecture. Uh, so in the Cub Connect, there are big two parts, uh, front end side and back end side. And front end is uh, implemented with Angular, uh, with TypeScript. And back end is uh, implemented by Python. And uh, Cub Connect is connecting other services like manufacturing management service, uh, which enables the factory uh, to manage uh, their orders from clients or payment or quotation, uh, something like that. And uh, also connecting data analyzing service. So uh, we are dealing uh, CAD data to the not only to the uh, but also 3D. So. Uh, Data analysis service uh, analyze uh, CAD data uh, to calculate size of volume, uh, something like that, uh, to create quotation. So uh, we are using OpenAPI uh, for th those parts. Okay, let's see the detail. So uh, we are using OpenAPI uh, in Cub Connect uh, in the three part. So one is uh, generate API document uh, using Swagger AUI. And the next is uh, code, client call generates uh, for API calling, uh, Swagger call gen using Swagger call gen. And uh, we are uh, creating, uh, we are uh, using OpenAPI uh, to uh, validate, uh, for validation of request parameter from clients uh, using Brava core yeah, and we are also using OpenAPI with uh, other services. So uh, it's, uh, we are using Generate API document with Swagger UI and uh, creating uh, code generation, uh, using code ge generation for API calling uh, using Swagger Cogen. So implementation workflow. So uh, there are big two parts. One is design. So uh, we need to uh, first uh, design API structure and write open API spec. This is important phase. And next, implementation. So once you write API spec, uh, some part of uh, front end uh, can be generated automatically using Swagger Cogen. 
And the uh, Swagger coaching can generate a uh, mock server as well, so the front-end development uh, can be uh, completely isolated from back-end development. And also back-end development uh, can be isolated from uh, front-end development. So uh, those two processes can be implemented in parallel. It's uh, very effective. So impression for OpenAPI. Uh, using OpenAPI to decrease your task so much. Uh, so document generation, code generation is so useful. And front end, front end and back end for API provider and API consumer can be implemented in parallel. <coughs> so it's very productive, I think. Okay, recap. So uh, Open API is hot technology to describe API specification. Uh, there are many tools to increase your productivity with Open API. Uh, you'll want actual uh, case uh, with Open API uh, of my company. So hot tool. And require more contributors. So as I said, uh, New Open API spec version 3.0 will be released in uh, July 2017. And there are many added good features, but uh, we cannot make use of these good features uh, if uh, tools uh, does not support it. So tools need to uh, support Open API spec version 3 as soon as possible. OK, let's contribute it. And uh, final, uh, we are hurrying. So uh, if you're interested in uh, Python or 3D print, uh, let me know. Uh, if you like Python and the Sushi and the Ninja, uh, you're the right Python uh, for my company. So go to the URL. That's it, thank you. We have time for questions. Hello, thanks for your, your talk. Um, I know um, in the spec design, you can have a description for any element. Uh, sorry, Valdridge. I know in the document specifications, you can have a description where you can say meaning things uh, about the elements. But I was wondering, in terms of uh, best practices to document your API, what would you recommend? Um, would it be the Swagger UI or anything, or any other tool that you know about it? Uh, regarding documentation? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, Swagger UI is uh, kind of a good documentation tool, I think, I mentioned in this presentation. Uh, but there is another document generator uh, for Open API spec. Uh, for example, uh, Swagger Code Gen can generate a static uh, HTML document, and you can define uh, style uh, by yourself. So you can choose. Uh, Depends on your situation. All right, thanks. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I've got one. Um, yeah, thank you for your talk. Uh, so I have a question <coughs> regarding um, more more complex validation scenarios. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you can say that a field is uh, required in the input data, but you, you might have, let's say, that is required if some other field is not present in the input data. So, basically, interfield validation scenarios um, and maybe other validation which depends on the context. So, um, how extensible is the default validation um, with JSON schema, and if you encountered any problems with that. Uh, so, uh, so using Brava Core, uh, it's based on JSON scheme, uh, I said, so it can validate uh, 
uh, validate uh, constraint defined in JSON schema. So uh, if you want to com complicate it validation, uh, you need to uh, choose another tool or write your code to validate it, I think. And I wanted to ask, um, is there support in uh, OpenAPI to define what an error format is going to be like? So can I also document what the JSON structure, if I want to document this field is required, you forgot to do this, is there, is there, uh, is there support for that? Oh, sorry. For errors, like I, I oh, have a errors. validation error, is okay. there a standard? Because I've seen I can define for the, my inputs and uh, also I'm assuming my outputs. Uh, but can I also define the format of uh, the output of error messages? You mean... Uh... Something like this field is required. Um, is that also documented in the schema? Yes, this, this is documented schema. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we have any other questions? If not, let's give a big hand to our speaker. Thank you.